special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, presents The Lone Ranger. With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? When Bill's at bat, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, had made camp for the night in the hills outside of Stockton. The Lone Ranger was the first to awaken from a deep sleep when the horses whinnied loudly and heavy strangling smoke rolled through their camp. Quick, we'll saddle the horse and we'll get away from here while we can. Uh, ready, Silver, ready, Scout. Easy, but the masked man and Indian saddled Silver and Scout. By the time they had finished, the fire had gained much headway. He was happy. I am moving in on three sides. Keep it trapped. Well, we must get out, Bill. The creek. We'll try following after the blazing woods. Oh, Silver! Oh. Easy, Silver, easy. and Toto urged the frightened horses along the stream in the oppressive heat through the canyon of flames. Finally, they left the Holocaust behind them and stopped. Close over, oh, oh, easy, still be caught. Easy, Scott, easy. We're fortunate to get out of that alive, Toto. Uh, we think we not get through. Silver and Scout brought us through in spite of their fear. Good work, Silver, old fellow. Good work. <laughs> Scout, uh, you, you do plenty good, too. The fire encircled our camp as if it had been deliberately started from all sides. That's right. We'll investigate the rim of the burned area. The sun is coming up, so it's light enough for us to see if there are any tracks. All right, let's go. Easy to be found. Come on, The masked man and Indian rode around the expansive charred area until finally Tonto pointed to the ground, saying, Look, Kimasabi. Marks, Indian pony. Who's over? Who's got a pony? I also see the hoof marks of two or three shot horses, Toto. There are others besides Indians here. That's right. They must have been seen making camp. For some reason, they tried to burn us out. Maybe them think we get caught in fire. Yes, otherwise they wouldn't have left. Uh, what we do? We'll trail those hoof marks. Come on, sir. Get them off the scout. and 
auto followed the hoof marks for some distance. Go, 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 fella. Finally, they stopped on a wooded ridge from which a narrow, steep trail led to an Indian village in the valley below. Steady, big Scout, easy, big The two men cautiously approached the top of the ridge. Using binoculars, they studied the village. Then Tonto spoke. That Comanche village, Kimosabe. Me see plenty brave. Smoke signals are rising from the hilltops across from here. Ah. Then send signals to other tribes. Come for big powwow. And look, Kimosabe, mm-hmm. two riders going along valley from village. And them white men. They may have been with the Indians who started to fire at our camp. Ah. Them riding a long trail to town. We'll go to the end of the valley and pick up their trail. They may be the men who are rousing the Comanches. If not, they may lead us to the man or men responsible. All right, let's go. Hey, this got easy, fella. Won't do that. Not to come. Later, the two men who had ridden from the Comanche village entered the office of Bruce Lackey, known in town as a land agent. Well, after waiting for you men to come back, what happened? Did you spot the masked man and Indian you told me about last night? Yeah, Bruce. That masked man and his Indian pal won't bother you. Jake and I saw to that, didn't we, Jake? That's right. What'd you do? We got the help of a few Comanches. And just before dawn, we started fires around their camp. <laughs> They didn't have a chance to get away. You sure of that? Yeah. The brush and trees out there were dry, burned like tinder. There was only one open lane of escape, and we watched there in case they made a break. But the fire closed in fast. That's right. It was a regular inferno in no time. <laughs> you sure managed to get those Comanches riled up, boss. I told the chief the town we were going to ask the government to drive them out of the valley so settlers could have the land. <laughs> that started things. The townsmen know the engines are restless. They have men guarding the west side of town, expecting that if an attack comes, it'll come from that direction. My plan is to have the Comanches gradually gather throughout the night on the east side of town. Then if done, move in across the railroad tracks, taking the entire place by surprise. We'll join the chief just before dawn and tell him what to do. <laughs> When the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the edge of town, the masked man waited in a grove, while Tonto went on foot to try to find out more about the two men they had trailed. Before long, Tonto returned. Well, what did you find out, Tonto? A Milo's trail on Main Street, Kimasabi. Too many other tracks. Uh, me not find out where two men go. Well, we do know the Comanches are gathering and may go on the warpath soon. Not right. I think the wise thing to do is for you to ride to Fort Davis, 20 miles from here, and advise Major Lewis of the situation. He'll remember you. Uh-huh. He'll have plenty of time to send troopers to protect the town. While you're gone, I'll do all I can to find out who's behind this unrest among the Comanches. After Toto left, the Lone Ranger spent some time disguising his features so he could enter town without his mask. Finally satisfied with the result... He left Silver hidden in the grove and walked into town to the sheriff's office. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, stranger. What can I do for you? I brought this letter to identify me. Oh. Mm-hmm. We appreciate it. Well, and signed by the governor, hmm? This mentions that you're a mask man, mister. I couldn't come into town wearing a mask, but I have it here. See, I've disguised my features. You have a companion? Yes, my Indian friend, Toto. He rides a paint, and I ride a white stallion named Silver. That's enough for me, mister. Mighty glad to see you. Here, here's your letter. Thanks. Now, sit down and tell me what brings you here. Briefly, the Lone Ranger told the sheriff what had happened early that morning. When he finished, the sheriff spoke angrily. I thunder if we could get our hands on the hombres who were riling up the Comanches, we'd be able to forestall the attack. It may be too late for that. I feel certain an attack will be made, perhaps within another 24 hours. In that case, we'd better send for troopers. The town has already gone to Fort Davis. Good, good. I'll pass out the word for the townsmen to be ready. The Comanche village is to the west, so I figure that's the direction they'll move in on the town if they attack. Well, that seems logical, but it's best to be sure... I'll do some scouting and try to keep track of their movements. Toto headed southwest toward Fort Davis. For a short distance, he followed the trail. 
Then, deciding to take a shortcut, he started across the plains. Get up! Out! The big paint horse raced over the plains at a gallop. Suddenly, one of his forefeet sank into a hole made by a prairie dog. <laughs> As his horse stumbled unexpectedly, Toto was thrown from the saddle, striking his head a glancing blow on a rock. Scout stopped, then slowly walked to his master. He nuzzled the still form a moment, then whinnied anxiously. But Toto lay without moving under the blazing sun, and his paint horse stood patiently beside him. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. When boys line up to run a race, galloping Gordon sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. You bet, Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. to continue. For some time after being thrown, Toto lay without moving. Then, with a groan, he sat up, holding his head. Oh. <laughs> it hurt plenty. Me hot. Thirsty. Need water. Slowly, the Indian got to his feet, a puzzled expression on his usually stoic face. Then, staggering slightly, he walked slowly to a nearby stream. Then, lying prone on the bank, sipped the cool water. Then he bathed his face and head, before rolling to his back. Within a few moments, he fell into a deep sleep. Darkness had fallen, and a bright moon shone when Toto awoke. I do not understand. How we get here, Scout? Start to fort in the morning. Slowly, Tonto got to his feet. His thoughts were still confused. Then, with sudden and startling clarity, he remembered. Oh, now, now may remember. He start to get troopers. Scout to stumble. Ah, that it. And they get bump on the head. <coughs> we lose much time, Scout. Still a long way from the fort. We go fast, Scout. Fast. Get him up, Scout. <coughs> That night, the Lone Ranger had scouted through the hills, but found that the situation hadn't changed. From past experience, he knew that Indians usually attacked at dawn. He decided to wait in the grove near town for Toto to return. He spent several restless hours waiting. Then, no concern because his friend hadn't come back, he mounted Silver and rode toward the Indian village to learn the latest development. Oh, Silver! <laughs> the ridge, he left Silver among the trees and moved forward on foot to look down upon the Comanche village. The whole war dance it means they're getting ready to attack the town. I'll wait until they start to leave and I'll ride ahead and give the warning. As the Lone Ranger intently watched the Indians in the valley below, a savage figure in war paint moved from the shadows behind him. Silver's warning when he came too late. But you not move. In the bright 
moonlight, the Lone Ranger saw the Indian holding a gun. He quickly raised his hands. You took me by surprise. Yeah. You spy and village. Me take you, chief. You keep hands up. Go down narrow trail, valley. What about my horse? Me lead him horse. Me move back, get horse. You walk slow. The Indian backed slowly, and the Lone Ranger moved forward, still facing the gun. When the Indian reached Silver and groped behind him with his free hand for the trailing rein, the Lone Ranger suddenly spoke. Now, Silver! The big stallion jumped forward, knocking the Indian in the back, sending him sprawling to the ground. I'll take your gun. There. Good work, Silver. Quickly, the Lone Ranger picked up the Indian's gun, then said, Roll over on your stomach. Put your hand behind your back. Soon, the Indian was bound and gagged. Then the Lone Ranger heard a sound that indicated the Comanches were ready to move. They're getting ready to leave. They're riding at the other end of the valley. They must not plan to attack from the west side of town. We'll have to find out. Come on. Come on, the Lone Ranger left the ridge and, from a distance, watched the savages approach the town from the east. He immediately started at top speed to reach Stockton before them. Faster, big fellow, faster! Come on, Ranger soon reached the edge of town and realized he wouldn't have time to warn the townsmen who were waiting on the west side of town. As he passed the stockyards, he noticed a line of cattle cars with engine attached and with steam up. The engineer looked in surprise as he stopped beside the engine. Oh, 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 oh he's a steady big fellow. The engines are coming from the east. They're almost here. What? The railroad tracks cross the streets into town. Start the train and use it as a barrier. Indian, you say? Yes, hurry. Move these cars along the track so they bar the way into town. That will delay them. Not me, mister. I'm leaving right now. Is this any big fellow? All right, I'll start it myself. The Lone Ranger quickly entered the engine cab, pulled the throttle, and started the long string of empty cattle cars along the tracks. The great horse Silver followed alongside the engine as the train of cars rolled over the tracks. The Lone Ranger could see the Comanches approaching as he moved the cars into position across the main road into Stockton and then stopped them to form a barrier. That will disorganize them for a few moments and they'll come around each end of the train. Now they come up. Come on, come on. Reached the barrier, they stopped. Oh, let the stop us. Chief, you lead part of your braves toward the engine. You lead the rest to the other end of the car. And uh, the Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger reached the west side of town where the sheriff was waiting with the townsmen. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Sheriff, the engines are coming in from the east. They are firing the town. Here's some. I stopped the train of cattle cars across the roads in the town. That will delay them a short time. Hurry, you may have a chance to hold them off while they're disorganized. All right, come on, everybody. Get up. The townsmen raced through town to head off the Comanches. When they reached the tracks, they could see some of the savages coming around each end of the train. <laughs> Take the cover and concentrate your fire toward the ends of the train. Right, right. Let's go, boys. For a short time, the townsmen managed to hold back the Indians as they came around the string of cattle cars. But soon, the Lone Ranger realized they were fighting a losing battle. The townsmen, firing from every conceivable point of cover, were unable to hold back the horde. Then... rode quickly to the scene and entered the fray. Oh, oh, oh. I sent two detachments to circle the town and get behind them. We heard the battle as we approached. Good. Oh, look. Three white men coming around the end of the train. We want them. Right. Get those three men! Several of the troopers obeying the major's order moved in on Bruce Lackey and his two gunmen. Meanwhile, the Comanches suddenly beset from the rear and stopped by the troopers and townsmen in front, broke ranks and tried to escape. Before long, most of those who were not wounded were rounded up, and the battle ended. Later, at the sheriff's 
police office, the Lone Ranger and Tonto stood with the sheriff, the major, and others, facing the three men responsible for the uprising. The major was saying... Tonto reached us just in time. Ah, uh, we have trouble on way, Kimasabi. Scouts tumble. Me fall. What? Hit head on rock. Me lose plenty time. First, me not remember. But when it get dark, me know me must get troops. Tonto, I was worried. Are you all right now? Uh, me all right. These three men ought to hang for what they did. Hold them for trial, Sheriff. It's a serious crime to incite Indians to an uprising. Well, we can thank the masked man in Indian for saving the town. Masked man? Yes. Perhaps I'll look more familiar to you if I wear this. Hey, he is a masked man. And this the engine rides with him. I thought they you were... You thought we died in that inferno you started at our camp. Well, they'll get another charge against them for attempted murder, mister. Uh, you fool should have made sure of it. Before... you. If I didn't know, you'll be properly punished. I'll beat you to a pulp. We'll wait outside and ride with you, Major. Adios, Sheriff. Come on, Tonto. Uh, adios. From the look in his eyes, Lackey, I'd say you're lucky you're in custody of the law. Oh, I should have. That's right. <laughs> Lackey, you made the mistake of trying to pull a fast one on the masked man in India. Now, he'll do anything to help anyone who needs it. But let me tell you, when a pole cat like you crosses the path of the Lone Ranger... He better look out. Hey, doggone you, Mel. You told me about a mass man, but you never did say that he's a lone ranger. seems a lot easier knowing champions are made, not born. Take Eddie Matthews, home run king of the Milwaukee Braves. Let's talk about that early day when Ed was learning third base play. He practiced bunting, how to hit, and chose the food that keeps champs fit. Wheaties and milk, his favorite. And now that Ed's a champ today, he still sparks up the Wheaties way. Yep, Eddie Matthews had his first bowl of Wheaties when he was only seven years old. Been eating them ever since. Talk about a ball player's breakfast. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Now watch Ed put that ball away. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Because champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.